Mr. Deesa, uh, last year you launched the ID3, uh, one of the most important cars uh, in decades probably for Volkswagen Group, during what was probably the worst industrial downturn since World War II. What have been like the biggest learnings from you uh, from this dramatic situation for you personally as a CEO and also for Volkswagen as an organization? I think for all of us, uh, COVID was a proof point and a big challenge. Uh, and for a big industrial company like Volkswagen being very present in China, in Latin America, in all the hotspots you could imagine, this was a proof to our organization, to the skill of our people uh, to keep uh, the company afloat and uh, running, to keep supplies uh, and also the contact, don't lose the contact with our customers was a big challenge. It started in uh, China, where we are very important. Uh, we, what we learned in China, we then had to uh, translate uh, to any other of uh, the economies you are working in. And I think we managed well. We could make a contribution to uh, societies, to the people. We kept our people relatively healthy, though our, our staff people mostly in better conditions than in the surroundings. Though that was good, uh, was a good experience, and it showed the the performance, but also the the commitment Volkswagen can show to to society. So this was a good uh, experience. On the other hand, it really COVID accelerated the uh, digitalization of all our processes. Customers became very digitalized, uh, and uh, so I think it accelerated the transition uh, of the world. So quite an, uh, quite I wouldn't call it traumatic, but in, in some stages it was traumatic, but it was quite an experience for us. It also showed to me personally how important individual mobility is. Now this uh, lockdown, uh, it was really for me very hard to stand. And also what I really missed a lot was the personal contact with our customers, with colleagues, uh, uh, with uh, partners. So, uh, but I'm hopefully we can recover soon. I think there's good mood now as we are overcoming COVID and we are looking into a more optimistic future now. The launches went quite well of our electric products, no? also in, in this transition period. Uh, we're now coming with a strong product cadence on the basis of ID3, ID4, uh, Audi uh, Q4, Q4 e-tron, Audi uh, e-tron GT, uh, Skoda, uh, Enyaq coming. So a lot of uh, EV product uh, hitting the markets now. So we think we are, uh, we did well uh, through COVID and now we are in, in good shape and very optimistic about the future. You, you did mention the, uh, the the aspect of digitalization and software, and I think it has been one of your key priorities probably as a CEO. Uh, what, what does it take for, for you to make Volkswagen or to turn Volkswagen from a big global industrial company into a software powerhouse? Like which parts are still missing? Yeah, there's still a lot missing, I, I, I have to say. Now, the uh, cars are already today uh, very much software products. You know, the lines of codes in a car are probably 10 times as many as on a smartphone. Uh, many of our, uh, of our processes are already fully digital you know, when it comes to, to buy a car to get information. So there's a lot uh, ongoing. But the car really becoming probably the most sophisticated internet device you can imagine. Imagine cars becoming uh, driverless and, and, and really sophisticated devices. This is a big step. It's a big step for anybody, uh, but it's also a big step for the traditional OEMs. Uh, we are gaining momentum. We are investing about two and a half billion every year in building up our software capabilities. We are buying uh, software companies. We are uh, hiring uh, skilled people. And uh, I think we are really, by the months, we are getting better. And I think we are in quite a good position also to remain a very strong uh, player in this future automotive world, in, in, uh, in new auto, as we call it. So I'm happy with the progress we are making, but there's still a long way to go until, I would say, 2030, where, where many cars would drive autonomously, people would spend the time in the car uh, playing with family or working or whatever. So it's a long way to go, but we are uh, good on the way. Yeah, you mentioned autonomous driving, and uh, uh, I, I guess the, the expectations in the industry have been uh, moderated at least to some degree or, or stretched further into the future. 
the regulation is still uh, very complex and in many uh, cases still sort of em emerging and, and developing. Which market are in which market are we going to see probably the first Volkswagen robot taxi then? Yeah, it's probably uh, around the world because we are uh, we have the Ford partnership Argo in the United States, and I think they are in the first row for bringing the service to market. Uh, so they are making good progress. The team is working really well. We are uh, in China uh, partnering with uh, local uh, tech companies to be also within the first uh, companies to offer autonomous driving, mostly in private cars so far, and for sure in Germany out of the cluster of the premium industry we are we're having here with the suppliers like, like the big uh, first-tier suppliers like Bosch and others. We are trying to be competitive in this area, which probably will derive here in Germany more from the uh, uh, open road traffic, uh, German autobahn uh, towards the cities, whereas in America probably it drives from slower traffic, uh, easier environments, good weather conditions to then uh, become more relevant on, on the open road. So. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, we are working uh, worldwide. Uh, we appreciate that uh, regulations in Europe and Germany have been improving recently. That we can also start testing in Europe, which we will do later this year in Hamburg. We will start with a fleet, uh, still a small fleet of uh, robo taxis based on our Volkswagen electric bus, the ID bus. So uh, uh, also in Europe, we will start testing. So who is going to win the race? Let's wait and see. I think there's a huge, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, many, many very talented people are dedicating their time into autonomous driving worldwide. Uh, rules and regulations are different. Tech uh, companies are different. Uh, and it will be a head-to-head -head race. I think it's worthwhile uh, competing there because this change will transform the industry more than uh, EVs or the electrification does because the car becomes so different when it's driving autonomously and who can drive cars autonomously will have a tremendous value in hands and the tremendous responsibility. And uh, we are pushing to be to be within this group. The Increasingly sophisticated cars uh, uh, also need an increasing number of, of semiconductor chips and, and computing power. What are your key steps that you're doing in, in this area to uh, ensure the supply chain, is uh, supply chain is resilient? We've seen a lot of shortages uh, across uh, and, and beyond the auto industry. What, what are the next steps to make this supply chain more resilient and also maybe we do like more of this like critical technology uh, that you do uh, more in-house? Yeah, f first of it, what we are uh, experiencing today is mostly uh, COVID uh, driven. No, there was a huge demand uh, of semiconductors because of the digitalization of, of uh, mobile devices, uh, any other devices. Any uh, more or less a relevant machine or, or device will uh, become connected to the internet, will deliver data, and one can experience it. So the demand for semiconductors is uh, soaring, increasing. Uh, and uh, we have to make sure that we have enough supply. We are working hard. Um, um, uh, Modern Axel, head of our purchasing and sales division, dedicates probably 60, 70 percent of, uh, of his time now to make sure that 22, 23, uh, we will have enough supply. I think it should be feasible because the overall demand of auto, automotive industry uh, on uh, for semiconductors is probably between 5 and 10 percent of the global semiconductor production. So this should, it should be a question of priorities, making the right plans. So I wouldn't expect a constraint for many years, but it will be a constraint for the, for the coming months. And we have to work hard together with our first years, but also more and more with the uh, semiconductor manufacturers and also with the fabs, with the the producers to make sure that we get the right amount of capacity for the future. We are prepared to also uh, uh, do commitments, uh, participate in the investments more than in the past, because as we said, the car becomes a, uh, a computer device and uh, uh, hardware is, is the basis for the software we are putting to the cars. 
maybe just to, to wrap it up quickly, touching on the political uh, side or political uh, affairs right now, the Biden administration has put a strong emphasis on, on, on green mobility, on electric vehicles. At the same time, at the same time, there have been increasing sort of tensions between uh, China and the US. Uh, uh, Europe, to some degree, may be undecided. How difficult or easy is it for a big global organization like Volkswagen to sort of navigate these, what seems to be partly diverging technological trends? When it comes to the uh, international uh, tensions we, we have been facing, we probably will always face, I also see that there is more dialogue now uh, uh, worldwide, which always is beneficial. We are a multinational, we are depending on free trade, uh, on, and we have, um, in, in most of the regions, we have a huge workforce where we feel responsible for. No, in, in Russia, we have six, 7,000 people working in China, 100,000 in America, uh, probably 50 in Latin America. So we are very much pushing, fighting for free trade because we think uh, free trade helps the world. It opens dialogue. It prepares, it, it improves the uh, conditions for, for living the wells in all the regions. And I think there are some positive signs besides all the tensions we are facing, but uh, at least there's a willingness to talk to each other and try to solve problems. Dr. Dies, thank you very much for your time. It was a great pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you, Herr Bye-bye.